Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we're seeing another slow day. Um, look how tight the uh, euro's been trading. I mean, this is just uh, something else here. One moment, get here. We've been basically trading in a 10 pip trading range for, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Basically 20 hours, we've been trading in a, 20, a 10 pip trading range, essentially, maybe stretch it up to about 11 or 12. Um, so the market's been relatively quiet. Um, one uh, market that's moving a bit here is the dollar yen. And um, I had seen here, um, I mentioned in the chat room when the yen was, dollar yen was still pushing higher. One of the things I saw, and I believe it, it was Sunday evening, but I mean, I believe it was Corota. I remember seeing it on the Reuters headline was that um, he had mentioned that uh, they're going to keep on uh, keep up the stimulus until they get to their two percent inflation target. Now, at the time, um, Dolly Yen didn't do. You know, I was looking at Dolly Yen. I mean, obviously, there's other other pairs, whether it be the Euro Yen, Aussie Yen, uh, Guppy, um, Cad Yen, but. At the time, as I looked at the dolly and I thought, well, that's a little bit surprising. I thought there would have been some type of, um, you know, a movement, and there really was none. But uh, we've seen this push a little bit higher. Uh, we knew that we had – yesterday we had 876 and as our resistance. And when you look at the dolly and remember, I mentioned last week ago, I didn't really have a good idea what this market would do. It looked like it wanted to slide back, but, you know, we were just marking this time in here – but when you think about it, we'd gone down to that 676 and we kind of bopped around, jumped around and markets just kind of dipping, trying to figure out what it wanted to do. And if you look here and we're looking on a two hour chart, you can see here where they had moved down here and then we had um, a real small doji. Um, and generally when you'll see something like that, uh, you'll see the market kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of an area of indecision. And the markets had already tried to move higher and dip back. And not that I was doing anything in the dollar yen because I haven't done anything, but that opened the door where we started. I think this was more about short covering than anything else. And so when we look up higher, here with the dollar yen, You know, we made it down here to that level that we've been talking about uh, for nearly a couple of months, mm -hmm. the 676, uh, the low was 678. And so the market, as you look at it along the daily, you see it more closely as, you know, how it kind of tried to make a jump up here, wasn't able to take it out, and kind of meandered. And so the doors opened potentially for a move up to 927, especially with the uh, um, – Powell speaking, FOMC minutes. Now, those aren't till tomorrow, but with uh, CPI and PPI, certainly if the dollar strengthens, we can certainly get to this 927, which is that pivot, which I think that the market would be having it as its eyes looking further ahead. Doesn't mean to make it all the way to 927, but certainly that would be an area where the market you'd be looking for. Other than that, and also, obviously, cable. This is really something as we press again, and here we are back here at this 2485, trying to press even beyond that. It's something it's uh something to behold i mean this thing has just simply not been able to get garner any kind of strength it's just been a sell 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 we did mention this is that um these guys just may not be satisfied until we come down here and maybe try and retest again and i mean they already got down there but i'm saying is that they're challenging it again so um we'll see if this takes us for another slide and certainly with the dollar still pushing up a little bit higher certainly opens the door for it can Get, you know, test those stops just below there. Other than that, and the uh, 
the uh, peso getting below 1892 and here we are trying to push back up higher. Hasn't been any real significant movement to speak of, but um, that's what we have for right now. So we'll um, take a look here into the market, into the news, and see what we have <clears throat> coming up. I know that, as you mentioned, um, we, the real news and probably why the markets are quiet you know, comes in on Wednesday, obviously with the dollar present to these air highs, uh, with Powell speaking and uh, FOMC minutes, that's when it's really going to kick off. And I guess we're in the into the summer doldrum. So things are relatively quiet. Um, I thought I'm looking here, as I mentioned, potentially for the, the dollar index may ease back as we get closer to Wednesday. It certainly hasn't. It's kept the bid up so far. It hasn't gone crazy or bonkers. It's just stayed with it within you know with its bid but we'll go on and take a look at the news and as i said it's a very quiet day so not a whole lot of movement here it's going in um, be just mm. Apple falls and stock markets feel the impact. With the global macroeconomic clouds looming and critical policy signals awaiting from the U.S. Federal Reserve Chair, Jerome Powell, this week, three individual stocks have grabbed the headline and the mood. Apple drop of more than 2% on Wall Street overnight after a broker downgraded to sell, dragged the technology sector lower and rippled across tech stocks in Asia overnight, too. The Apple retreat after Rosenblatt uh, Securities called a Fundamental deterioration over the next 6 to 12 months came after Monday's news of Deutsche Bank's downsizing and staff cuts of 18,000 was met with a stock price uh, drop of more than 5.4%. The negative reaction to the latest restructuring of Germany's biggest bank weighed on the battled, uh, battered European banking sector as stocks and bond markets and credit market agencies doubted Deutsche's moves would deliver a break even next year of the promised return on equity over the next three years. Shares of BASF were uh, are down 6.6% in early trade today after German chemicals giant issued what one trader described as a shocking profit warning of the second quarter and full year, blaming a global economic slowdown and trade war between the United States and China. That's one of the things that we've been talking about is that, you know, I still expect us to see these slowdowns and I still expect the Fed to go and cut Obviously, you're not looking at 50 basis points. Is that at least not that's how the market is seeing it? But nonetheless, this impact is still going to be felt. So even when you see, you know, like we saw the good um, NFP report, you still have further worlds, I believe, that are coming down the coming down the stream. And why I think we'll, we'll get that uh, Fed cut, and I think we'll still get another one. It's just a matter of how many. Uh, the equity market gloom saw the S&P 500 drop almost half a percent overnight, and major market, uh, major uh, Asian markets from Shanghai to Hong Kong and Seoul also fell. Japan's Nikkei managed to stay in the black as a rising dollar pushed the the yen back to its weakest since May, helped by scaled down expectations of the Fed easing later this month, where only a quarter point cut is now priced into the futures markets. The dollar index rose to its highest in almost three weeks. Your dollar was probing 112 on the downside, and 10-year Treasury yields firm above 2%. And looking ahead, we see Swiss June jobless, um, Italy May retail sales, and Canadian housing starts. As I mentioned, it's relatively quiet. Did mention uh, when we covered, if you saw us on the week ahead, um, Pat will be speaking in St. Louis and Bullard also speaking in St. Louis. But other than that, today's a relatively quiet day. So let's go move into uh, Forex. Dollars buoyed by declining bets on big Fed rate cuts. The dollar traded near a three-week high against its peers on Tuesday as investors and pair bets on aggressive U.S. interest rate cuts ahead of the Federal Reserve Chairman's testimony to Congress on the economy. And let's see, wait one moment. Let's check one other thing here.
Sterling was primed near a six-month low versus a dollar in speculation. The Bank of England will soon join other major central banks in easy monetary policy in response to growing worries about the global economy and Britain's exit for the European Union. Fed Chief Jerome Powell's comments in two-day testimony to Congress began on Wednesday will be watched to determine whether traders will continue to reduce bets for deep interest rate cuts, which could help the dollar continue its rebound against other major currencies. <clears throat> There were simply uh, too many dollar shorts built up before Powell's testimony, said Yukio Ishizuki, foreign exchange strategist at Daiwa Securities. Now people are really starting to question why there was expectations for 50 basis point cuts. People sold the dollar around 107 yen are starting to suffer. The dollar index versus a basket of six major currencies was little change at 97.36 on Tuesday, which is close to a three-week high of 97.44. The greenback briefly rose to a six-week high of 8.90 yen before settling at 8.68. Investors will continually uh, will closely analyze Powell's comments when he delivers a semi-annual monetary report before Congress to gauge how the U.S. Central Bank will lower interest rates or how far they will lower it. A sharp rebound in U.S. job growth in June uh, reduced expectations that the Fed will cut interest rates by 50 basis points. A week ago, the market forecast an 80.1 per chance of a 25 basis point chance cut and a 19 point uh, uh, chance of a 50 basis point cut. The dollar is bouncing back, so there's some downside risk for the euro and cable, said Masafumi Yamamoto. There's a risk the Fed will not be as dovish as people thought. Central banks ahead of the curve in this cycle are Australian and New Zealand. The Fed is following, but the ECB and the Bank of, Ex Bank of England are laggards. The British pound was last quoted at 2515 with its striking distance of 2041. Data on UK domestic product and industrial output are due on Wednesday, while the Bank of England will release its financial stability report on Tuesday, which could help traders gauge where the BOE will take a more dovish view on the economy. Last week, BOE Governor Mark Carney said a global trade war and a no-deal Brexit were growing worse to Britain's economy, which might need more help to cope with the downturn. That prompted investors to increase their bet on BOE interest rate cuts. Okay, and let's go over the um, the bias chart. As I mentioned, it's very quiet, and um, so let's go and take a look here. So on the on the year dollar, let's see where we stand here. Boy, we push it low. Look at that. Just right. Look. Look at the cash dollar index. Just as we just came on, look at it. It's now pushing even higher here. Well, we're open to, to come down here and test this level, which is 1181. So let's move this down here. And no change. Um, this still remains key, 1262. Let me see if it's back down. 85 is a long ways away. But 1262 does remain the upper level here. Let's move into cable. Wow, look, you see here, we're just pressing even lower here, pressing those stops. Let's take a look if we have something on the short term to gauge for. Boy, 
2429. That'd be the 127% extension of this. So let's go with 2429. <laughs> And for right now, it's going to be 2546. Here's that area we talked about, the 69.44, and we're certainly testing and just easing just below that. Some good touches coming in right there at 69.35, so just, just a little bit low on that. Um, as this dollar index tries to push a little bit lower, it's going to be right there at 69.25. We mentioned that yesterday is if they want to press below it, it could go as low as a 69 and a quarter if we get beyond that. So we're going to go there. And resistance is going to come in right there at 69.80. And let's go move into the Kiwi. Well, we're falling back to this level, and here's that sixty six twelve. We'll just move this area right here just a sliver lower here. Some good volume coming in right there, which is 65.98. So let's go with 65.98 on the downside. And it's going to be right there at 64.46. We need to say 66.46.
It's relatively quiet right now, but the dollar continues to just eke higher, just eke and higher. Well, here we are pushing back here at the 3136 level. After finding that support on Friday at 3043, let's take a look at the two hour chart. Right there, 3141. Downside support is going to come in right there at 3084. 3084 right there. that will move on to the peso. Now when we're seeing a, a, a close below this 1892 would open the door for a slide to 1865. We got that, let's go to the peso here. And we closed Almost, I mean, we just closed just a hair below this. You can see right here. But that, you know, we were talking about this, uh, a move below, daily close below 1892 to open the door for a move down here to 1865. Well, we're just hanging around here. The resistance, that's still open, but the resistance here is going to be 1899. <laughs> Came right into that support right there, 1886. So that's going to be the downside. And this quiet activity makes it a little bit tough if you're trying to day trade it and you're having to hold these positions long, a little bit longer, um, which, like I said, doesn't make it too easy if you're trying to, trying to day trade these markets. And um, yesterday, I mean, I scalped for like, I think it was like five pips out of the euro uh, when it took a long after we dipped. So it's just been, I'm glad I jumped out, but I'm just saying is it's slim pickings right now if you're trying to day trade or scalp these markets. Um, Unless you catch a market right when it's getting ready to turn, like here with the dollar CAD. Um, but look here, we are with the euro just gently easing back down here. Moving back into the peso. Look 
the target that this monk's going to have its eyes for, whether we get there or not, <clears throat> is going to be the 927. Now, that's, as I said, 40 pips away, but that's where the monk will have its eyes on. There's going to, there might be some intraday, you can see right there, coming to 1908, which that's been a level before, 1908. So on a short-term basis, we'll look at 1908, but 1927 is a huge one. So let's go with, uh, go back again. There you go. Support is just a hair below those lows. It's going to be eight twenty six. If you look right here, come across right there. Potential up to nineteen twelve. So that nineteen oh eight is just fine right there. Nineteen oh eight. Or nine oh eight I should say. Let's move into the cash doll index. right there at 9.64. Let's take a look at it on the two-hour chart. We'll go with 9.64 here. Obviously, that's got to be a flip back to bear, so should have already changed that. We'll keep this, I mean, that's lower, so that's way down here. Probably really realistically have to move that a little bit higher, uh, which is going to be right there, 97.28. <laughs> With that, let's go and move into the cross rates.
we now we pushed this up here looking for i guess a bigger move up here in the 7248 as the market had pressed up in here but right now the resistance is going to come in right here at 72.31. And this support continues to remain here at 71. I hear 71.77. No changes there for the support on the Kiwi end. And let's go move into the Euro Yen. So we challenged it and got just above it and we're receding back a bit here and we've had our resistance at 2203. But certainly the dolly yen is trying to, I mean not dolly yen, but the yen pairs are making their move. It's going to be right there, which is going to be 2211. And actually, that should be even higher. Uh, they did run there, but this is where the real resistance comes in right there. 2221. So let's just keep this for up in here and go with 2221. Right there for support, 2165. And let's go with the Euro odd. It's interesting to see how much this overshot. As I mentioned on the way down, we're looking at the 1695, and I thought the market would, you know, maybe overshoot about maybe 10 pips, maybe I mentioned yesterday 20, and then rebound higher. Well, now we've gone 50 pips above, actually uh, 55 pips above the 1695, but that's after we came down here, and like I said, this market had been really well overdone. And I like that 1695 very at the time, but we continued to press even lower at the time. And like I said, finally, we've been able to secure a move above that. But as I said, um, that's after, you know, several days holding, you know, after that first move, that first day, then, you know, here's a second day, a third day, a fourth day. Finally, we get that move above it. So it just shows you how much this market really, the downside momentum had been so strong. Um, Short term, it's going to be right there, 61.11 for support.
It'd just be just a little bit higher right now. Sixty-one fifty-one, right there where we're at. Thirty-eight percent doesn't even come until sixty-one eighty-six, but this is a good little level right here. Let's go into the Euro Kiwi. Good level right in here at the 69.42. Right there, you can see it. <clears throat> 69.57. We'll actually give it a little bit more room right there. 69, let's call it 69.60. With downside support coming in right there at that level. Sixty six should be sixty nine sixty two. It's going to be sixty eight ninety three. And let's go with the RCN. <laughs> this continues to meander here. Um, We're coming in right here to the support. If they want to press just a little bit lower, that takes us to 75.42. So we'll just move this just a little bit lower here. 75.42. With the upside coming in, tightening it up quite a bit. Hmm. We'll go with that seventy five seventy four.
And we're still below this 3602 here in the guppy. Resistance still holding here, which is 3614 and bracketed for right now for 3548. So no changes. Let's go to starting odd. And it's going to be right there at Right there, 79.38 for support. Blue gold relatively quiet here too. Um, I generally don't look at two or uh, four hour charts on here, but um, you can see some nice setup bars here. So I was looking at whether it be a two hour, which I generally use 30 minute, one hour, and it seems to be reacting as far as setup moves right now for the four hour. Um, let's go and swing back into the main chart. And you can see here the euro versus dollar continues to be under pressure right here, although in very, very quiet trading. As I mentioned, uh, you know, yesterday we were trading about, I mean, for up until just a little while ago, we we're trading what, about is it 12 pip range maybe for 18 hours? I mean, or something like that. Something really ridiculous. Um, watch out for this yen. Like I said, the target, uh, well, it, Overall, target they'd be looking for is 927 the pivot, but 908 on the, resi uh, um, the resistance right here. Cable still trying to press these lows. But that's what we have on a very quiet day. I don't think things will really heat up until we get into tomorrow with uh, uh, Fed's Powell's uh, first day of testimony. And then, of course, we have CPI and PPI towards the back end of the week and a lot of Fed speak. And thank you again uh, for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.